Hi, I'm David and welcome to this Leisure Bit Advanced Mods on Camper Control. Let me introduce you to the concept. So in this first episode, we're going to cover off the background. So where did the idea come from? The concept, what's it all about? The first steps, the initial proof of concept, key features, so what ultimately will it be able to do, water fill, onboard capabilities, and then next steps, so what happens next. This is a long-term project uh, vlog. Um, I call it my uh, winter project um, because it's quite an advanced one, quite a bit to do on it, so let's get started and let's start having a look. So let's look at the background. So where did the idea come from? You've probably seen on some of my other videos, uh, when I was looking at the Eldis and Compass CV range, one of the things that I wasn't as impressed with as the rest of the vehicle was the control panel, because it's very basic. And even if I go back to 2005, 2006, when I had the motorhome and first got that, the control panel in that was far more advanced than the one in the Eldis, or I certainly looked it. Um, it had a display, controls, you could turn pump on and off and everything like that, but you could see what was going on on the display. And when I looked at alternate models, um, they had far more advanced control panels. One of the key things I, I wanted to do with the camper van was to actually get something that was a perfect base. The right size, the right colour, the right core features, but I'm not overly worried about modifying it to get it exactly how I want it. When I priced things up, I did think about going for a custom one, but actually um, the Eldest CV range came with pretty much all the base features that I was after. So the control panel in the CV just wasn't quite what I was after, but that's not a challenge. Let's, let's make it do what we want to do. And we'll come on to the sort of things I'm going to make it do very shortly. So one of the things I wanted was a single control panel wherever possible for all the different features and functionality. And I noticed on the CV, there's one for the gasset, um, understone gas bottle. I can't actually start in anger this particular piece because one thing I'm really keen to do is not to completely rip out ends of cables and things like that because I did want the ability to put it back if, if need be, wherever possible, because um, you never know, um, it might be something I might want to sell the van on in a few years time and might want to put things back as they were. So wherever possible, I'm trying to preserve the ability to go backwards. But the principle was simply to be able to get the single place to control it with a touch screen graphical interface similar to um, a lot of the high-end motorhomes and I also wanted to add some extra features in which don't exist. One thing I think is re really helpful for example, we'll go through the full list of features I'm planning to include, uh, but one thing that was really helpful um, that I saw on some camper vans and motorhomes, specifically top-end ones, is the ability to dump your water with a remote valve. Um, so not having to go out and turn the taps yet. So if it's raining, you can pull over the drain point, hit a button and away you go. So that's um, the sort of things we're wanting to add as well. But more on that shortly. So now let's have a look at the very early proof of concept just to give you a view for it. So this is the screen off the unit bit of reflection here but if we plug that in you'll see it boots up also has some audio as well and then we've got the menu here uh, and we just touch the screen to control the different functions so for example let me hold it back hopefully you can still see that uh, if we want to change the screen brightness we can just go on here as you can see we can alter it in there and then just press save when we're done 
Uh, we can go in and change the sound volume level so we can turn the sound down if we want or we can turn it uh, up or we can turn it off altogether if we want to do. I've got a plastic cover over the screen at the moment just to stop it getting scratched while we uh, work through it. Um, you can get your Wi-Fi code, um, QR code for your Wi-Fi and uh, set things like the, the date and time in there also has a, a real-time clock um, so you can see what's actually what time it is and set alarms and things like that so this is the very early proof of concept but I just wanted to show that that actually mounts um, see the back of it, it actually mounts within um, a bezel uh, in, in, in the panel so that kind of gives you a, a little bit of a view or a bit of a concept of the what we're trying to achieve you can see there's the there's the time there we go but that that just gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, kind of very early stage of where we're starting from and uh, how it'll work um two options on screen size there was that one there which is the smaller of the two which is uh, i think it's uh, just over five inches and then also a seven inch version which is the same size as the Swift um, control panel that's made by Sargent. So let's have a look at the key features. This is what I want it to be able to do and the sort of things I want it to be able to control. So let's have a run through those. The first feature is basically the power button or the main switch, uh, which turns the master power on and off so you can shut everything down. I'm going to put a couple of features on that one. So for example, subject to getting it connected up with the heating OK, if the heating has been switched on and you press the master power off, unless you do a long hold on that, which means there's some problem or, or emergency and need, need to actually cut the power immediately, which hopefully is very unlikely. Uh, but when you press that, it will keep the heater power on but turn the heater off for a few minutes just to make sure it doesn't overheat so that the fan blows the residual heat away with that one. The second is monitoring. So the monitoring of the leisure and vehicle battery but also the AC and DC power usage. So you know how much power are you drawing from a hookup if you're connected to hookup or how much DC power are you drawing from your either vehicle or leisure batteries. And also have a movement sensor. Um, that's useful to kind of wake things up uh, if you're moving around, for example. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work on the different use cases for that, but potentially an alarm uh, as well. So could you, you use it as some form of alarm or notification? We'll come on to connectivity afterwards, but you might want an alert if, if there's movement in the vehicle. The next is lighting. Um, quite a common thing to be controlled by a control panel, of course. Having the main light control, um, so on off dim, and also the ability to have time settings or movement settings, as we touched on previously. Um, the awning light, again, the ability to turn it on and off. And then a couple of auxiliary lighting, um, but those with colour control on those so that you can create mood and atmosphere. I think one I'm going to put around the step up into the cab and the other one um, in the back, I think, over the uh, roof space just to give it a bit of a glow and light up. So at least a couple of um, auxiliary outputs for driving additional lighting there. Then it's the clock and alarm. So basically a real-time clock, um, as you got a very early view on there, an alarm clock, but also a timer because you might want to time something that you're cooking for example or you might want to wait 15 minutes and then say i'll take you out in 15 minutes to roxy and you set 15 minute timer and then when it dips you can go um then an auxiliary for controlling devices which can be connected together and potentially they're looking to control the the, the whale heating system and also the hot water and potentially the fridge as well um, through CI bus um, control. So, so I'm looking into, again, that, that's slightly more advanced and down the lines and take a little bit of 
work to do that once it's probably the back end of the project from a con connectivity point of view an option of remote access so that you can access the um, system from your phone uh, probably must do it as a, a web app rather than a, a full app uh, and then you can check and see you know how's your battery have you left any lights on you know is there anything else you need to do or turn lights on turn them off whatever you need to do there so a, a deg degree of connectivity so you can check the status of the vehicle or be able to turn things on and off with your uh, mobile phone or ipad um, or tablet whatever it happens to be uh, then from an environment perspective uh, going to have outdoor temperature indoor temperature indoor humidity so you can see what, what it's like inside we'll probably have outdoor humidity as well uh, with that um, and i'm also going to include um, as an option with it the indoor carbon dioxide because it's a very good view of air quality so so you can check when it's going to get a bit stuffy so you don't end up feeling lethargic and things like that so that's one thing i was keen to include with it because i find those very useful at home and also the light level for controlling brightnesses of things so it can create some dynamic lighting as an option depending on the outside light level uh, the next thing was tank heaters so the ability to control the tank heaters and actually again set up some settings to say that they come on when certain conditions are met such as the outside temperatures below five or four degrees uh, whatever you want to set it to and the van's occupied and the battery level is above x for example so that's uh, and other settings so if the battery drops drops below a certain point send an alert out or all of those different things can be controlled then because hooking all these things together then gives the ability to create some useful sequences that help automate some of the things that you would have to manually check as you go through from a wastewater perspective um, wastewater level so how full is your wastewater and a wastewater dump valve that can be controlled from the panel or again from your phone potentially with a little remote control so you can do it from the cab as well and then fresh water so pump on and off water level uh, the filler pump solenoid now we'll cover more on that one in a bit more detail in a further video but that's basically the power to the exterior pump if you want to pump from a aqua roll or a water container with a pump the ability to turn that on and off so when it's full it knocks the power off so it just doesn't keep filling and then make a mess um water flow um so basically water metering how much water's gone into the tank and also how much water then comes out of the tank which is a more accurate way of measuring how much water is used then so you know when you need to fill up how much water you're carrying with a, a much better degree of accuracy it won't be 100 percent accurate but it'll give you know within a liter or so how much you've got in i would expect and then fresh water dumps so you can dump your fresh water again with an electric valve and then finally the gas or lpg level and also going to fit a valve so it can switch itself off when you when you're not using it uh, at the tank i'll use the gas it kit for that but then interface it into the system and that's principally the key features of camper control and that's what i'm wanting to get built out so i built this gadget which i've called water fill and you connect your hose to this end and you connect a pipe that drops into your um, camper van if you get a little adapter um, you can just connect it straight onto the um, inlet water inlet and basically what you do is um, you key in, you press star, you enter the number of litres you want. This example, I'm going to do zero because we've got no pipe connected up and press hash. 
and then just hash to confirm and then there's a countdown and you'll have heard the solenoid click and when it's finished it plays a little tune obviously a zero litre fill there there's no water going through I'll cover this in more detail in a separate video um, but the, the reason for devising um, this particular gadget is to make it easy to fill your water up because when I hired the motorhome and when I had the motorhome it was an absolute nightmare and you wasted a lot of time watching things filling up and I don't know about you but I always made a terrific mess um, when the tank overfilled because you weren't quite sure when it was full and then you ended up with water all over the place uh, which is not only wasteful of uh, precious resources but it makes a mess and you look a bit daft as well so um, I built this um, as a kind of portable version with a rechargeable battery in of that one you can put instructions on the back look what more could you ask for um, but basically that was then you would put the quantity of water you required you know if, if it was a full tank whether you want half a tank just put the number of litres in and then the water flows until it reaches that quantity and then stops but with the camper control rather than having to carry around a box like this I'd like to get it built in um, to the van so it's all managed automatically for you without having to have any different gadgets so that's water fill and water fill on board essentially just takes that to the next level and saves you needing to carry around separate uh, bits and pieces for it uh, and also then hooks into the main camper control so you get a good view of how much water there is how much you've used and various other useful things like that so as I say this is a bit of a long-term project and fingers crossed it all works itself out and does everything um, needed you know a bit of a hard work and effort goes a long way on these things I always try and it's all makes sense um, what I'm trying to achieve here but as that gives you a little bit of an introduction of what I'm trying to do in order to continue the project I do need the the van to do it and uh, hopefully coming in November now but who knows um, with, with respect to that with all of the supply challenges at the moment uh, but once get the van we'll go through step by step um, how it evolves and then ultimately hopefully the end goal is to end up with a nice product that uh, works really well and uh, makes life easier because um, that's what all of these things are about and just takes a little bit of uh, effort away so you can enjoy your leisure time more so early days at the moment so we'll see how we get on um, might hit a stumbling block or not get it far enough or not quite refined enough but I'm pretty confident we'll get there but uh, if you're interested um, I'll keep these in a playlist because uh, it'll interest some people, won't interest other people. But then you can just follow through um, with the videos and see how it comes along and see where we get to on it. So that's Camper Control. I will see you on the next episode. Um, and that one will be after the van. So I'll do a follow-up one on the with a little bit more detail and a proper demonstration of the water fill uh, gadget. So you can have a look at that one. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. You take care.